In the foreseeable future, scientific progress takes a great turn as researchers successfully reprogram the measles virus, converting it into a potent remedy for various illnesses, including cancer. Despite this achievement, the virus slips out of their grasp, spreading uncontrollably and transforming the populace into dangerous mutants known as Darkseekers. These mutants, driven by a craving for human flesh and vulnerable to sunlight, plunge New York City into disarray, leaving it a desolate wasteland with unrestrained zoo animals wandering the abandoned streets. Fast forward three years from the initial outbreak, and New York City lies in ruins, its once bustling streets now silent. Inhabited only by free-roaming zoo animals, amidst the wreckage, Robert emerges as the lone survivor, a former army virologist accompanied by his faithful dog, Sam. Together, they navigate the barren landscape, with Sam proving invaluable in locating animals during their hunting excursions. Armed with both precision and compassion, Robert demonstrates resilience by allowing families of lions to share in the hunted meat, showcasing his adaptability and kindness in this altered world. Setting an alarm on his watch to make sure he's indoors before sunset, Robert takes extra care to avoid being outside at night. When the alarm sounds, he heads back to a heavily fortified house with lockable doors and windows. To mask his scent from the dark seekers, Robert even goes as far as bleaching the front steps, Inside the secure house, Robert keeps a good supply of food and entertains himself with tapes of old newscasts, trying to maintain a sense of normalcy. He engages in everyday activities like listening to music, chatting with Sam, and doing routine things like giving his dog a bath and cooking dinner. Despite his attempts to distract himself, haunting memories resurface when night falls. As darkness falls, Robert seeks safety in the tub with Sam and some firearms, while the sounds of dark seekers outside remind him of his family. During the initial outbreak, when the government sealed off the island, creating chaos in the streets, Robert rushed to gather his wife Zoe, their daughter Marley, and the young Sam, who was still a puppy at the time, Robert urges his family to leave the island and stay with relatives, sparking a heated argument with Zoe. Furious when she realizes Robert intends to stay behind to analyze the virus and search for a cure, their dispute almost leads to a car crash. Despite the tension, Robert remains determined to find a treatment, every morning. After his exercise routine with Sam, Robert heads to his basement lab to continue his experiments. Sam is barred from entering the lab due to the risk of infection, but Robert, immune to the virus, works tirelessly. Inside the lab, a group of caged rats serves as test subjects for the virus. Robert experiments with various serums, all of which fail until one morning when he observes a rat showing signs of improvement. Encouraged by this breakthrough, Robert realizes the next phase of testing requires a human subject, later, Robert and Sam go to the video store, where Robert set up mannequins to pretend everything's normal. He talks to them like old friends, swaps movies, and even pretends one's flirting with him. Robert promises Sam he'll flirt back someday, then, they check out parks where Robert grows veggies, grabbing some for themselves. Using a map of houses they've visited, they find food but leave medicine and cleaning stuff. Sometimes, Robert finds sad reminders like bodies or unused nurseries. After filling up the car, Robert heads to the South Street Seaport, broadcasting an invite for survivors. While waiting, he entertains himself by playing golf on Air Force planes. One day, Sam spots a deer, leading them through the streets. The deer goes into a dark building, worrying Robert about potential dark seekers' nests, as Sam refuses to come when called, Robert has to enter, keeping quiet to avoid detection. Startled by terrifying noises, he gathers courage, covers his flashlight, and explores. Following a trail of blood upstairs, he finds a deer, not Sam. While searching, he spots dark seekers near a wall. Reacting quickly, he retreats, concealing his flashlight. Turning around, he locates Sam under a desk, scared of something. Simultaneously, a dark seeker attacks from behind, but Robert shoots him before escaping with Sam. Advising Sam to take a different corridor, Robert runs to a window, jumping out just in time for sunlight to kill two dark seekers and trap the rest inside. Upon reuniting with Sam, Robert sets up a trap on a bridge using a truck and canvas. Instructing Sam not to follow, he drops some of his blood on the canvas. As dark seekers approach, the trap activates, pulling them inside. The apparent alpha dark seeker roars at Robert but retreats from sunlight. Later, Robert tests the cure on the female dark seeker in his lab, confirming her infection with UV light. Noticing a butterfly tattoo, he injects the serum from the successful rat. After a moment of calm, the dark seeker howls and struggles against her restraints. Upon losing consciousness, the dark seeker undergoes futile revival attempts by Robert, with her vital signs plunging to zero. In frustration, she displays anger through furniture movement. Robert then positions her behind a glass door, documenting observations, highlighting the alpha male's deliberate sunlight exposure. This conduct prompts contemplation on the dark seeker's neglect of survival instincts, evoking memories of a chaotic outbreak day. Recalling evacuation turmoil, where exclusive ship access was granted to evacuees, Robert reminisces about the desperation of people, especially children seeking assistance. 
Amidst military roadblocks, soldiers accompany Robert and his family to reach safety, while approaching the mannequin, an unexpected twist unfolds when a car falls, trapping Robert. The revelation dawns that the Dark Seekers have cleverly copied his intricate setup. A head injury results in blood dripping as Robert loses consciousness, only to awaken to a blaring alarm. Sam, his devoted companion, stays by his side as the sun approaches the horizon. Armed with a knife, Robert manages to free himself, albeit sustaining a leg injury. Dragging himself along the ground, he untangles the rope. However, Sam hesitates upon hearing growls emanating from a nearby building. Alpha, accompanied by a pack of infected dogs, unleashes them on Robert, but they retreat as the last rays of sunlight approach. Struggling to stand, Robert races to his car, retrieves a gun just before the sunset, and successfully fends off the attacking dogs. During a fierce struggle with a pack of infected dogs, one of them attacks Sam, biting her while Robert wrestles with the others. Despite the challenge of handling his gun against the relentless animals, Robert manages to shoot them down one by one. Witnessing Sam in pain, he prioritizes her over his injuries, carrying her to the lab where he administers a dose of his experimental serum. Cradling her in his arms, he attempts to comfort Sam by singing, but she gradually succumbs to the virus. Faced with no alternative, Robert reluctantly euthanizes her, enduring her protests until she breathes her last. After mourning her loss, he buries Sam in the garden before attempting to resume his routine. Struggling to cope, he turns to drugs in a futile attempt to numb the pain. During a visit to the video store, he engages in a whimsical conversation with a flirtatious mannequin, alluding to a promise he made to his departed canine companion. In a fit of desperation, the mannequin's silent response becomes the breaking point for Robert. Fueled by anger, he embarks on a vengeful mission during the night, using his car to run over Darkseekers. While successful in killing some, the others retaliate under the command of Alpha, orchestrating an attack that culminates in toppling a light pole onto Robert's car. They proceed to overturn the vehicle, trapping Robert inside. However, Alpha's entry into the car is met with the sudden activation of a UV light, causing the Dark Seekers to scatter in fear. Despite sustaining injuries from the car's overturning, Robert perceives that someone else is rescuing him. The Good Samaritan inquires about his destination, and Robert, in his weakened state, provides his address, urging them to ensure they are not being followed before departing. In his dreams that night, Robert is haunted by visions of his family. The harrowing memory unfolds as the government, in a desperate attempt to contain the outbreak, bombs the bridge, leading to the tragic demise of Robert's family. The following morning, Robert awakens to the soothing sound of an animated movie playing on his TV. Although his leg wound is mended, he remains cautious, clutching a gun as he enters the kitchen, where, for a fleeting moment, he is gripped by the illusion of seeing his family once more, in an unexpected turn of events, it turns out to be Anna and her son Ethan who have arrived to rescue him. Anna has prepared breakfast, prompting Robert to lower his guard, setting aside the gun. Seated with them, he listens to Anna's narrative. Hailing from Maryland, they heard Robert's message and halted at the port. Their destination is Vermont, perceived as a secure haven nestled in the mountains with survivors shielded from the virus by the cold. Skeptical and enraged, Robert vehemently rejects the idea, asserting to Anna that everyone is dead, punctuating his frustration by slamming his plate on the ground. Sensing the thin thread holding his composure, Robert retreats upstairs for a few moments of solitude. After regaining his calm, he rejoins the group, seizing the opportunity to share a quote from the film to reassure Ethan that he harbors no ill intentions. Opening up, Robert admits his affection for the movie, drawing a parallel between himself and the monster, lamenting his lack of companionship. Expressing gratitude for the rescue, he engages in a brief conversation with Anna. She reveals her origin on a Red Cross evacuation ship from San Paolo, narrating how their group, upon the Navy's division, returned to shore for supplies only to discover their boat stolen, five members of Robert's team. All possessing immunity, fell victim to the Dark Seekers. Despite the losses, Anna remains determined to go to Vermont. However, Robert refuses to accompany her, expressing his commitment to stay at Ground Zero and work on finding a cure, meanwhile, they investigate the area where Robert was found the previous night. Examining the trap, Robert notes that it was crafted from tools taken from their own trap. Reluctant to accept the idea that Dark Seekers were responsible, Robert questions their supposed lack of higher brain functions, challenging their ability to plan, hate, or love. Anna speculates that the Dark Seekers might be undergoing evolution, in a different scene, they take Ethan to a fountain for some fun. When Robert hears Ethan complaining about the cold water, he is struck with an idea, returning home, Robert places the female Dark Seeker on ice, aiming to optimize the serum's efficacy. Anna discovers photos of unsuccessful serum tests on humans in the lab, later, Anna finds Ethan asleep on the couch. In a gesture of kindness, Robert offers to take him to his daughter's former bed. As Anna peruses photos of Robert's family, he shares a bit about them, revealing that their daughter was named after Bob Marley. Surprised by Anna's unfamiliarity with Bob Marley, 
Robert plays his favorite CD, expressing how Marley served as his inspiration, especially after surviving a gunshot at his house. Following the explosive confrontation with the Dark Seekers, Robert, Anna, and Ethan regroup inside the fortified house. As they catch their breath, Anna continues her plea for Robert to abandon Ground Zero and join the rumored colony. Robert remains adamant about his mission to find a cure, despite the seemingly insurmountable challenges. The trio faces an uncertain future as they navigate the complexities of survival and hope in a world overrun by darkness. After the explosive clash with Alpha, Robert scrambles through the wreckage. Searching for Anna and Ethan, the previously safe hideout now feels exposed, and Robert faces the immediate danger. In this tense and uncertain environment, the struggle for survival unfolds, reflecting the unpredictable challenges of navigating a world dominated by the menacing dark seekers. Each moment is filled with suspense, capturing the gritty reality of survival in this post-apocalyptic world. Suddenly, Alpha and more dark seekers show up outside, and the trio rushes to hide in the lab. As the dark seekers break in, Robert and Anna are surprised to see the female test subject getting better, indicating that the cure might be working. However, their relief is short-lived as the Dark Seekers enter the lab, forcing Robert to close a glass door between them. Despite Robert's attempts to convey that he can help them, the Dark Seekers, led by Alpha, remain unresponsive. In an unexpected twist, Alpha draws a butterfly, a symbol familiar to Robert, resembling the tattoo on the woman. This revelation makes Robert realize that Dark Seekers may have emotions and a desire to protect their own. Challenging his previous beliefs about their motives, Robert sets aside his weapon, shutting down the machines and guiding the woman through the glass door despite Anna's objections. Faced with the furious Dark Seekers, Robert administers a syringe filled with medicine, awakening the woman. Alpha, displaying affection, shares a moment of reunion with her before departing. Despite Robert's attempts at an apology, all he receives is a growl. Realizing the town now belongs to the Dark Seekers society, Robert decides to join Anna and Ethan. The next morning, they embark on their journey to Vermont. Anna records a message guiding survivors to the safe colony, 